Hello and welcome to Woodbridge, the best town around. My name is John McCormick. I'm the mayor of this great town, and we're here tonight for our annual celebration of National Black History Month, which this year is entitled African Americans and the Arts. I'd like to quickly introduce our council members who are in attendance to your left, Council, uh, Councilman at Large, uh, Greg Ficarra, to his left, Second Ward Councilman Howie Bauer for South Polona Casby, to his left, Fifth Ward Councilwoman Debbie Meehan for Colonia, to her left, Councilwoman at Large Lisbeth de Jesus, to her left, Chairman McAuliffe, Councilwoman for the First Ward of uh, Woodbridge Proper and Sea Warren, uh, to her left, not a council person, uh, but the head of the um, Township Human Rights Commission, and it's a long story there, which I'll get into when he, when he talks. And of course, our council president, councilman at large, Kyle Anderson. So I'd like to first read this proclamation, and then I'm going to turn it over to both Kyle and Glenn and ask them to talk about uh, the importance of National Black History Month. Whereas the United States Congress has designated February as National Black History Month to recognize the contributions and accomplishments of the black community has made to our nation. And whereas the black community, regardless of gender, religion, socioeconomic status, or class, have made historic contributions to the growth and strength of our nation and township in countless recorded and unrecorded ways. And whereas Woodbridge Township is home to many trailblazing black community leaders who inspire and change our community for the better, including the very first ever elected black official in the township of Woodbridge, which is, of course, our president, Kyle Anderson. And whereas each year a special theme is proclaimed with the 2024 Black History Month theme as African Americans in the Arts, a theme that pays homage to those who have resisted historic and ongoing oppressions. Now, therefore, I, John McCormick, Mayor of the Township Council uh, of Woodbridge, in accordance with the Township Council, do hereby recognize the month of February 2024 to be National Black History Month throughout Woodbridge Township and do further recognize all the black leaders and trailblazers in Woodbridge for their contributions and celebrate the economic, political, and social achievements of all people of color. Oh, we also have the head of the uh, Independent Club of Colonia, Mr. Phil Hull here. Thank you, Phil, for being here. So now I'd like to turn it over first to our current council president, uh, Kyle Anderson, and ask him to explain what this means to Woodbridge Township. We've done this for several years now. Uh, and uh, nobody better to talk about it than Kyle, as, a, as I said, the trailblazer uh, for black elected officials in Woodbridge Township. Uh, since Kyle's election, there's been somebody, two people elected to the Board of Ed. Uh, there have been people appointed to all commissions, library board, planning board, zoning board, uh, wellness, environment, arts, history, you name it. Any board we have has representation of blacks, of also Hispanics, of also Asian Indians, and people of all uh, diversity cultures and, and religions and that's what this council looks diverse you're looking at we don't have our Asian Indian councilman Vera he's not here yet but we have an Asian we have a black and we have a Hispanic on the town council and we have the same on the Board of Ed and literally all of our boards and commissions so we celebrate diversity uh, nobody better to speak right now than Kyle Anderson on Black History Month uh, Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I won't go on too long. We do have uh, our, our HRC Chair, uh, Glenn Morgan, here. But Black History Month uh, began uh, as a week, and Carter G. Woodson was the creator of it. Uh, and uh, this is that's that's been typical of uh, Blacks in America. Um, we've had to start off small, and we've had to grow from there. Uh, we hope that one day that we. We don't have to speak about it as a month and that it's it's accepted as American history and that it's a, a great part as black Americans have always been a uh, from from back before before the Revolutionary War and um, and throughout uh, the present day um, black Americans have had a significant role in American history and uh, but it's in this month you know they uh, when when uh, this uh, when Carter G. Woodson first uh, thought of this holiday and created this holiday, um, a lot of it was associated with uh, President Lincoln's um, birthday, uh, February 12th. Uh, so they felt that there was a natural uh, joining of it. You know, we all tease, we say, of course, you know, we get the shortest month of the year, right? You know, um, but in that time, we feel that uh, it's necessary to educate uh, our fellow Americans every day um, throughout the year 
about the contributions of black Americans. And, um, you know, this, this room is evident of that. Uh, we have uh, clubs and organizations that are focused on um, uh, uh, black society and uh, their contributions. Uh, we have uh, members, as the mayor said, uh, we've opened up that door. Once that door is opened, it's our job to keep it open. And it's, it's the job that we do, and it's how we collaborate. However, we realize that we can't do a lot of these things without our, our, our fellow Americans, whether it be white or, or Hispanic or, or um, uh, American Indian uh, or Native American. Uh, we have to work with all of them, uh, and we have to embrace their history as well as them asking them to embrace ours. So I just, I'm glad that everyone is here today. This flag raising is the second year that we've been doing it. And um, we're really uh, proud of uh, the, the Human Rights Commission for sponsoring this um, flag raising. And, you know, for, for the mayor and his foresight and realizing that um, we do, you know, I, I, I recall, you know, I recall when he and I first sat down and um, me being on the council. And he said, you know, council, everybody on council looks like me. That can't be anymore. We have to change that. So that, that's, that's it takes brave, brave individuals uh, to do that, to say that, you know what, I'm going to be the change maker. And he does get credit for, for being a change maker and bringing people in that he feels that love Woodbridge um, and are willing to bring their history, their family history, their, their culture into uh, Woodbridge's history. Um, this is just a small example of it, um, but it, it shows that making this a National Black History Day in Woodbridge, you know, for Woodbridge, and having this as a day where we proclaim it as Black History in Woodbridge, it speaks volumes about where we're headed. And I think that Woodbridge is a great place to live and a great place to raise your kids and educate them. So, Mayor, thank you very much. Thank you, Kyle. Hey, Kyle, Ms. Quarterman, I didn't exactly say there's nine people on the council who look like me. There's not nine people in Woodbridge who look as good as me. So, but Kyle would have been a choice for the council, regardless of his color, based on his involvement in the community, which I respected, and which uh, the first person to mention Kyle to me was actually John Mitch. Uh, it wasn't even about diversity immediately. It was and it wasn't. But Kyle, you know, runs the biggest, most successful sports organization in town, the former Island Giants, now the Woodbridge Broncos. He's got five kids that have been through the school system, all active, all honor students, all very involved in sports. So he's a known commodity. So when you're the mayor and you want to put people on your team uh, that can help the cause, uh, Kyle was a perfect choice. And the fact that he led to, you know, being the first uh, black on the council was, and being the trailblazer, like we said, was absolutely terrific. Now I'd like to introduce Glenn Morgan. So way back in 2020, and I said this at the uh, Martin Luther King ceremony, and I said it at the essay contest too, and it's kind of a little bit difficult to talk about, but 2020 was a very stressful time in society, in our town, our county, our state, our country. Um, racial, racial strife, um, just difficult time, a difficult time to be an elected official. And we realized that we needed assistance and help in dealing with the issues that were coming before us at council meetings, packed council meetings, tense council meetings, demonstrations, marches. Like I said, quite a difficult time to be elected anywhere in the country. Um, we did some homework, checked what other towns were doing, and we found that many had a human rights commission, which sounded great, and we talked to some, I talked to some other mayors and other council people and administrators, and we decided the idea sounded great. Then we found out that we had a human rights commission back in the 60s and into the 70s, and for whatever reason, it disbanded. And then we found out that the head of it was a young lady named Pauline Morgan, who was the mom of Glenn Morgan. And we put two and two together and said, wow, if we do start this, and I've known Glenn forever. Glenn's as active in town as Kyle and all of us are. Um, he's the second best player ever to play baseball in Colonial High School, uh, after Bobby Farrell, who's also on the Human Rights Commission. Um, and by the way, I'll introduce Don Green from the Human Rights Commission and Denise Anderson from the Human Rights Commission. Um, so I said, wouldn't it be great if we could talk to Glenn and he could have some kind of role with this Human Rights Commission? Think about the message. It's something his mom started, and he's got stories about his mom and the neighborhood he grew, he grew up in that are just fun to listen to. 
uh, and she was a trailblazer, and she didn't care what anybody looked like, what they dressed like, where they prayed, where they ate. She didn't care. She was for everybody. And it, we thought it would be wonderful if, if Glenn would consider revitalizing the Human Rights Commission. Then we talked to a few people. We put former Councilwoman Pat Osborne on. Uh, we put Gary White on. We put uh, Reverend Lauer's wife from Avenel Presbyterian Church on. Some have since left and been replaced by others. But it's been a very vibrant group. They meet four, five or six times a year, public meetings. Back then, they had a lot of interaction, a lot of talking, a lot of you know people coming to meetings and expressing their opinions. And Glenn has just done a wonderful job leading the Human Rights Commission. And I want to thank him for his service and ask him to say a few words now of what it means uh, to have a Black History Month celebration in Woodbridge. Glenn. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Bob, you know who's number one. <laughs> OK, I'm, I'm just really proud to be here for our second annual flag raising. And uh, thank you for providing us with the venue for this. And obviously, it's going to be continued throughout. Um, black history, it's American history. And we all need to know about it. You know? Uh, there's a lot of things that are being taken away right now in our country as far as what we need to learn in history, period. So it's just very important that uh, we stay the course in making sure that we're teaching our kids the right things. <clears throat> I'm also proud to have our own director of DEI here in this township. There's a lot of townships that do not have that. So to have that focus is vital, vital, and very important. There is, a, I got some information here from, uh, from my library assistant, Miss Julie, over there. And she, was, uh, she gave me some information here to read, read out. And it came from Monica. She runs the uh, main library. She wants to encourage you to visit the township libraries to see the current displays, including black Americans in Woodbridge history. An Arts Institute of Middlesex County funded the exhibit, which was developed by the Woodbridge librarians in collaboration with the talented local artist S. Scott, the Woodbridge Historical Preservation Commission, and the Independent Club of Colonia. If you were not able to see the Human Rights Commission display of, Amer of the black uh, American inventions that was at the uh, town hall last year, you can visit this display at the main library this year to see and enjoy the museum's quality exhibit. That exhibit also will be displayed throughout these different high schools, and we're going to rotate them as well. You also will see also will see that displayed out front here in the municipal building as well. So please uh, bring your kids to it. It's uh, very, very informative. So um, we at the Independent Club of Colonia also will be having our Black History celebration February 24th, right at the Casia Center. And that's from 3 to 5, if I'm correct. And doors open at 2. So you definitely want to try to make it to that as well. A lot of the information you see here and what I'm talking about is displayed here and also on the HRC's Facebook page. So you get a lot of information from there as well. So look forward to uh, seeing everyone and thank you. Thank you, Glenn. I think it's important to note that that was always your Black History Month celebration, Phil. You and the Independent Club was always at Evergreen. It, it out, you outgrew it. There were just too many people coming, and we had to move it and find the Acacia Center, where there's probably three times the amount of space. That, that's an indicative uh, a factor of your leadership of that organization. So uh, let's hear for Phil Hall, the president. <laughs> and now it's time to go outside and raise a flag. Uh, Assembly Speaker, do you want to say anything? Our Assemblyman Craig Coughlin. 
It's got to be quick because we got to raise a flag and come back for the meeting. All right, I'll be very quick. Say thank you, everybody. It's a privilege to be with you today uh, to celebrate black history. I think Glenn said it best. Black history is American history, and it's a time for us to come together and celebrate the great diversity of this community, the great contributions of black Americans throughout the course of history. And let's remember there are still challenges that we have to overcome. There's still improvements that we need to make. We still need to appreciate all that we have done together, and that, that the road ahead of us still has, has hurdles to be hurdled. So thanks, everybody, for being here. Let's go outside and raise a flag. Thank you.